This is a tour of the cervical region and the thoracic cavity of the involving the respiratory system. So up here in the cervical region, we have the thyroid gland. Remember that from the endocrine gland. This is the hyoid bone. And the hyoid bone has lots of muscles that are anchored to it. Remember the hyoid bone does not articulate with any other bone in the body. So the larynx, that's this region here, has nine pieces of cartilage. And on this model, we can see here's the thyroid cartilage. It's shaped like a shield and it's often called the Adam's apple. Here's the cricoid cartilage, and it is ring-shaped. Here we have the trachea. So if we open up the larynx region, we have the glottis. The glottis is gonna be the hole where the air is gonna go down. Here we have the esophagus. The esophagus is where food and drink go down to the stomach. So this right here is the epiglottis. The epiglottis covers the glottis when you swallow food and drink so that you won't get any liquid into the lungs. This is the vocal fold right here. This is the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. So if I put this together, you can see the thyroid cartilage looks like a shield and then the cricoid cartilage is ring-like. So the epiglottis is elastic cartilage. The thyroid and the cricoid cartilage are hyaline cartilage. Here's the trachea, so air is going to go down the trachea. These indentations represent the C-shaped cartilage rings that help keep the trachea open. So we can see those rings here on the trachea. So inferior to the cervical region, we have the thoracic cavity. In the thoracic cavity, we have two lungs and the heart. So this is the right lung. We have three lobes. So we have the right superior lobe, the right middle lobe, and then the right inferior lobe. The left lung only has two lobes. It has the left superior lobe, and the left inferior lobe. The left lung is smaller. It has the cardiac notch that's gonna allow for the apex of the heart. These little odd shapes here represent the lobules of the lungs. Beneath the lungs, we have the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the muscle that's gonna assist in breathing. So when it contracts, it pulls down. That's gonna allow the lungs to expand. And when you exhale, it's going to relax, it's going to push up, it's going to help push the air out of the lungs. There's a couple of things that go through the diaphragm. We have the esophagus, it's going to go to the stomach. And we also have the abdominal aorta. So the trachea comes down and it branches into the bronchi. The bronchi tubes get narrower into bronchioles. Deoxygenated blood comes back to the heart from the body through the vena cava and then gets pumped to the lungs. So here's the pulmonary trunk and then it's going to go to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. So pulmonary tells us it's going to the lungs, artery tells us it's going away from the heart. So here is the pulmonary artery and then it's going to go into the capillary beds and it's going to do gas exchange. So carbon dioxide gets off, oxygen is going to go into the blood vessels, it's going to come back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. So here's the pulmonary veins here. And then this oxygenated blood is going to get pumped out to the body through the aorta. This is a representation of a normal bronchial. And this is a representation of a bronchial during an asthma attack. You can see the inflammation and how the airway is restricted. This is actual tissue from lungs. So this is normal tissue. If it was in the body, it would be more pink because it would have a blood supply. 
This is a piece of lung from someone who has been smoking a lot, and this shows the tar buildup in the lung tissue.